And joining me now in studio is Professor Peter Kagwanja. He's the CEO of the African Policy Institute. Professor, thank you for joining us on thank the program. You. Now, thank you, China continues to be a key provider of humanitarian assistance to Africa, even though at this point it is Africa's leading uh, trade partner. What does this say, though, about Sino-Africa relations? I think in the last one decade, Sino-Africa relations have grown uh, by strands. And uh, the reason for that is, is that... Uh, New China, if I may use that word, has become Africa's uh, preferred partner. Uh, reason being that the, in the relationship between China and Africa, there are no conditionalities, there are no senses of superiorities of inferiority. It's an equal, uh, equal mutual uh, relationship. So the principles of mutuality and China's assistance and, and trade towards Africa and so forth, how has all this, though, played out in maximizing on China and Africa's relations? Now, um, Africa-China relations is essentially taking a dimension that uh, Africa has not had with, the superpower, with any other superpower in the past. Uh, the first is that Africa's main concern has been at the level of adding value to its goods so that it can go up the value chain in global markets. The second, and I think the incoming phase, is that of industrialization. And industrialization uh, of Africa is essentially going to be the game changer on the continent's ability to uh, basically reduce poverty and increase prosperity. In, and in that regard, I think China is, in the 21st century, is Africa's best partner. Of course, for Africa, the core of it is poverty reduction and it is anchored in uh, African Union's Agenda 2063. So how can China though and Africa partner together to achieve that objective for Africa? I think the, the first thing is China should dispense with models that have been used to define Africa, Africa's relations with the rest of the world. I guess I think what it is doing is important uh, in terms of developing uh, based on history, that across civilizations, neither Africa nor China has colonized each other. And as such, therefore, we have the framework, the, soft, the software on which to build uh, you know, respectable relationship. Two, focusing on uh, enabling Africa to add value to its goods and to open Chinese markets for Africans is important. But at the same time, Africa need also to open its markets and enable, and, and enable Chinese technology to come in in order to boost industrialization. But I think what I would advise is that ch the Chinese people keep the software that they have developed, uh, not to borrow models of relations between people from other states, because Africa's experience with the rest of the world mm -hmm. is where you are looked down upon and you are expected to be a child that does not grow. They should just keep the mutual relationship they have kept with the African Union, with African countries, and people-to-people -people, uh, relationships. Right, uh, Professor Peter Kagwanyu, we'll leave it there for the moment. Thank you very Thank much you. for your insights. Thank you.